Welcome to the Lean Body Mind review of the Smart Garden 9 by Click and Grow. My name is Steve, and over the course of this video, I plan on taking this indoor hydroponic garden through its paces, and hopefully can help you decide if it's something that would be right for you. Now, I've recorded this video over the course of several months, just because that's the type of product it is. And as such, you may see some issues in terms of continuity, either in terms of my appearance, the camera, the lighting, the sound, etc. Just be aware that this started several months ago with the unboxing. I'm sure you all know that I love to cook. And when I'm using herbs, or as they say outside of the U.S., herbs, I want to use them fresh. Unfortunately, I live in Wisconsin, which means my gardening season is short. My herb season, a little bit longer, but probably only six months where I can be harvesting fresh. Right now, it's winter, so no fresh herbs right now unless I want to go to the grocery store and pay a premium price, oftentimes for some sort of sketchy looking herbs. So I have here the Click and Grow Smart Garden 9. Now this is made in Estonia, and if you ask me to find Estonia on a map, I probably couldn't do it. Fortunately, they have a map on the side of the box here, so I can see that Estonia is just south of Finland. On the other side of the box, they state that they're helping to feed the world, or I'm helping to feed the world, through this purchase, as it helps support sustainable farming. So, so far, so good. But let's open the box and see what's inside. There's a little Chinese proverb here, which hopefully I can read upside down. It says, if you want to be happy for a month, get married. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, become a gardener. All right, first there's a little note stating that even though it's red tomatoes shown on the package, we've got yellow mini tomatoes in the box. So, yellow mini tomatoes, some green leaf lettuce, and some basil. There's instructions here on the inside lid. Very, very straightforward. I really like the simple visual nature of this. That's just sort of the way I am when it comes to instructions. We have our light, some germination domes, the rails for the light, our base unit, and the instructions. So in addition to what comes in the box, I also ordered a few extra herbs. We've got rosemary, thyme, oregano, sage, mint, and flat-leaf parsley. Now, in terms of the installation, pretty straightforward here. Nicely labeled for the left and right arms. Now, you can see that the... What arm is this? I guess it depends on which way I'm facing. For you, it would be the left arm. It's got a groove in it for the power cable. Kind of nice. Cable control. In the laptop, then we'll run the power cable down through this channel here. And there's also channel in the base. Just like that. This is a well-constructed unit, too. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased. This is some quality plastic here. Next, we have our pods. And we also have these little tabs here so that we can label with a dry erase marker. So, let's see. One of my concerns, just because I used to have an arrow garden, is that some of this stuff can get a little bit bushy and start to encroach on some of the other herbs. We'll see if that happens with this. So I'm going to start with thyme. And basically this is sort of like a little curing K-cup of sorts. Pop the lid off. Put in our little herb pouch. Pop the cap back on. Got it labeled. And then we'll put on our little germination lid. Just that simple. Now I'll repeat 
with the rest. So I've got all of my herb pots planted and labeled. So now I'm gonna add the water. Now here's where you add the water and you can see there's a little float in here, which tells you how much you need to fill up. We wanna go until that float comes up to the top. All right, to get it up to the top, that took right about one gallon or somewhere in the neighborhood of four liters. Then I'll pop on my germination caps. And now I just need to find a place where my wife will let me plug this in. Initially, the click and grow resided down in my basement next to the area that I normally start seedlings for my garden. My hope though is that very soon my wife will let me transplant it, no pun intended, back upstairs near the kitchen. At about a week in, we've got some growth. You see some little sprouts there for our thyme and oregano, basil, lettuce looking good, and oh, yep, yeah, tomato, a little there, yeah. Lettuce, like I said, lettuce coming in. Maybe some rosemary. And you'll notice that the Click and Grow now has a new home right next to our dining room table, just off of our kitchen. At six weeks in, I think we're pretty close to harvest. At least for our parsley, that's looking good. Mint coming along kind of slowly, as is the rosemary. Lettuce, looking pretty good. Tomato coming along nicely. Basil, probably ready. Sage, we could get a couple leaves off of that. Oregano, kind of coming along. All right, this is not any variation of time that I've ever had, but we're going to grab a little chunk of it and just taste, just to see if there's some sort of time I'm not aware of. That is not off. Oh, oh my gosh. I do not know what that is, but that is certainly no herb I've ever tasted before. That is that is worse than eating just grass. Um. Oh yuck! Whatever it is, I I'm that's getting ripped out right now, and I'm gonna have to try planting another one of these little thyme pods. So we're six weeks in, and I think I'm gonna be able to start harvesting some things soon. In fact, I probably gotta trim back some of this lettuce just so that uh, it doesn't encroach too much on the rosemary, and uh, and then probably start pruning back the, the uh, basil so that bushes out a little bit more. I think also once these really get going, I'll be able to probably provide some advice on sort of where you should position each of the herbs so they're not getting in each other's way, as well as perhaps the timing on some of them. You may want to stagger the planting date, especially it looks like on the mint, oregano, and rosemary. At eight weeks, we're in full-out harvest mode. I'm grabbing herbs like parsley here for a recipe. Not long after that, though, you need to start getting into maintenance phase, trimming up some of the wilted or dead leaves, kind of cleaning up some of the dead leaves that fall off. And you may even decide that it's time to trim out an entire plant like this thyme here. Now, you'll notice as I pull out these cups that it's very, very much root bound. And that's good in that it will help keep the plants from growing too much, like growing past the lights, but you will need to start planning for replants, which I'm gonna do right here. With some more thyme and some rosemary. I'm gonna add some more water. And I'm also going to water the pods directly, just to kind of give them a little bit of a head start. Snap back on our lids. And the little germination caps. Additionally, Click and Grow has an app, I think both on iOS and Android, that you can use in conjunction with your smart garden. Now the app is more, I think, informational than it is actually a management tool, if you will. So for example, here is my garden, and you can set what the plant dates were, what the arrangement of your herbs was. And if I go into basil here, for some reason they 
give each one of your plants a human name, and this is Sophie, the basil. It says right here that the age of this is 154 days, and that exceeds the proper harvesting window by about seven weeks on this. And as you can see by looking at my garden here, the basil not looking real great, mm, neither is the oregano. So really, in terms of the app, the onus is upon you to kind of take a look at how long it takes for some of this stuff to sprout, how long you're going to be able to harvest it, and kind of create a replanting calendar accordingly. Additionally, there are some of these herbs that grow a lot faster than others, so you're going to want to plant your slower ones first. I found that mint and rosemary and oregano were rather slow to grow, whereas things like basil, parsley, lettuce, they grow a lot faster. The other potential use that I could see for the click and grow, depending on your climate and if you've got an outdoor herb garden, is you could use this to create seedlings. In fact, you could create seedlings of anything. It wouldn't have to be necessarily herbs. You could start some jalapeno plants and transplant them outside one spring or whenever frost goes away where you live, once that season rolls around. But before transplanting any of these things outside, you will need to harden them off because they've been kind of babied on the inside. You need to toughen them up a little bit outside before you do the full transplant. You can Google hardening off seedlings rather than listen to me explain it. On the whole, I've been really, really pleased with the Click and Grow system. It is well constructed, it's clean, it's tidy. I used to have an arrow garden, and because that didn't have any sort of a pond system, all of the roots just spread out in the basin. It was really a mess. It was a mess to clean up. The water would start getting kind of foul and smelly. I think the Click and Grow is just a far better self-contained, tidy, better looking system. But it is not a set it and forget it sort of a system. You still need to be a gardener. You still need to take care of your plants. You still need to prune them, trim them back, set up a schedule for replanting and harvesting. And it is not inexpensive either. At over $200 for the Click and Grow 9, I don't know that there's necessarily a break even point that you're going to hit in terms of buying fresh herbs. If you're buying this, you're buying this because you want the convenience of having fresh herbs at a moment's notice that you can clip and use in a recipe like I do on the Serious Keto channel. So if you're looking to buy this, thinking that you're going to save money growing your own lettuce or cherry tomatoes or, or whatever, I'm going to say that's probably not going to happen. But if you are a gardener and you just want to be able to garden indoors year-round, or if you're an aspiring garden and you're looking for something that you can start with and then gradually move up maybe to container gardening and then maybe a full garden, this is a great way to dip your toes into the gardening pool. If that's a metaphor. It probably isn't. I will include an Amazon link down in the description below for the Click and Grow. They've got different size models. I've got one with Bluetooth. I don't know if that's necessary or not. And from there, you can also find all of the different seed pods. They also have just empty seed pods if you want to start planting your own stuff, whether that's a variety of lettuce or some type of container type of a plant. Just be aware that whatever you're going to grow, you've got limited clearance below the lights. About this much. Hopefully you found this video helpful or informational or entertaining. If you did, please click that like button. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this, I would love to have you as a subscriber please click that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my videos.